My goodness, guys. This is... It just never ceases to get under my skin every time I see these eyes looking at me from the outhouse. And I don't know what it is, uh, perhaps something about the unknown. You only see this large set of eyes looking at you um, that, I don't know, it's just terrifying. And then to discover that they actually don't go away. If you stand just on the threshold of the door without going too far, they sit here and stare at you and they blink. And it's just, ugh, I don't know, it just, it's really icky, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But in recording this for this intro, I decided to go a little further and ended up discovering something entirely new. Who the hell is this? Or should I say, what the hell is this? In my last video, I made a comment at this part that in my first playthrough, I thought I saw someone's hand. I definitely saw someone under the house that kind of moved away, but you really didn't get a good picture of them. So this time I decided, well, let me go ahead and crouch down and approach the house from further away. And in doing so, I discover this thing watching us from under the house. And I have no idea who or what this is. It doesn't look like anything else we've seen in the game so far. And my goodness, this is as terrifying to me as the eyes from the outhouse are. What do you guys think? Do you think it's the same thing that was watching us uh, from the outhouse or is this something completely new? Let me know down below. Without further ado, let's get into the meat of what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. So a few days ago, I did a video covering Jisatsu and a theory on what I thought the motive of the game to be. In my time perusing videos on YouTube since, I've come to the realization that there's so much more being hidden in plain sight that speaks to what the game actually is. We're told in the Steam store that Jisatsu is a Japanese found footage mockumentary horror game. This being true, I think we can, however, put this game in the category of analog horror. I actually think this game gains heavy influence from one title in particular in that genre, the Mandela Catalog, and I'll explain why. Before we go any further, I want to give credit to a few YouTubers whose videos actually helped me come to these conclusions. As it seems after posting my explain video, YouTube determined these creators needed to be in my suggested feed and I wouldn't have come to these conclusions otherwise. First, it was Gab Smolder's playthrough of this game that helped me determine that what was written on the newspaper article at the beginning is hidden part. As I said, I can't read Japanese, but she can. And when she read the phrase, I just went and used, put it in Google Translate and uh, it spit back out hidden parts. So if you're interested in another creator's take on this game, go watch her video. Next, it was Wendigoon and Sagan Hawk's videos on the Mandela catalog that opened my eyes to the fact that there's a lot of inspiration in this game, it seems, from that series. So please go check out their videos. And if you really like the content, then I highly suggest you go watch the complete series on Alec Kister's page, as he's the original creator of the series. I have the links in the description if you're disturbed like I am, and wanna go look at something that will probably keep you up at night. Also, look at my first Jisatsu Explain video for a complete look at the playthrough of this game, as I won't be going too much into detail here. So what exactly is analog horror? Well, according to Wikipedia, Analog horror is a specific genre that is commonly characterized by low fidelity graphics, cryptic messages, and visual styles reminiscent of the late 20th century television and analog recordings. 
This game has all of that in spades, as of course, we progress the game by finding videotapes, there are hidden messages throughout, and it would seem that this is recorded during a time when high definition recording devices weren't yet a thing. That's why this game belongs, to me at least, in the analog horror genre. But what does the Mandela catalog specifically have to do with this? Well, it's a series created by Alex Kister back in 2021. To give a very shortened explanation of the series, it's about a small town in Wisconsin that gets invaded by creatures called alternates, and they are led by a false depiction of the Archangel Gabriel. They apparently are trying to get rid of people by driving them to take, well, dirt naps through the use of any kind of audiovisual media. They attempt to replace people by creating doppelgangers. However, it's not an exact science and sometimes they come out imperfect. I believe there are a couple of examples of alternates in this game and one such example is the grandmother. Early on we see who I believe to be the grandmother walking down a hallway and later staring at us from an open window. I think something is off about her however, because as you stare at her, you can see her features don't look right. She doesn't exactly look like how she did when you see her in the recording when she's cutting food in the kitchen. She just looks different. I also believe there's a perfect copy of a person in this game, and it's the grandson. Let me tell you why. In the Mandela catalog, one of the main characters, Adam Murray, is found to be, spoilers, an alternate. Now, the difference is that in that series, Adam was kidnapped as a baby and his mother, Thanos, snapped herself out of existence. Adam, however, was shown to be able to resist the influence of the alternates later in life. In Jisatsu, the grandson is a complete thrall to the demon in the basement and brings damnation to the family and anyone who would view the tapes. When the child would have first come into contact with the demon, we don't know because as far as I know, we aren't specifically told when the child first meets the demon. But we might have an idea as to how the demon gained a foothold into the lives of the family. And it was all the religion. So there's a great deal of Christian iconography in the game from the pictures on the wall to the statues that appear later in the game. Heck, at the beginning of the first video, you see the grandparents praying unceasingly over the bodies of their fallen children. In hindsight, it's very strange that the child is allowed to video record this. Anyway, I think that praying isn't a good idea. In fact, I think it works to their detriment. In the Mandela catalog, one of the plot points is that Christ was actually replaced by the devil and that all religion actually works to spread their cause. I think something similar is happening here. The child speaks to something in the hole in the outhouse. The type of speech used sounds a lot like how the King James Version of the Bible reads. Listen to this from the demon. The speech flows the way a lot of the speech does flow in the King James Version of the Bible. I thought this was a bit on the nose when I first read uh, the subtitles, and I think it's meant to be this way. I also think that's why the demon is able to exist in the whole with the crucifixes and religious statues. Typically, demons are shown to flee from crucifixes as they are holy and you'd think the area being covered with them would be as well. However, if the world functions similar to how it does in the Mandela catalog, then these objects wouldn't deter the demon as all religious iconographies would only strengthen it. Now the thing that I don't understand then 
is why there is a need to invert the crucifixes near the end if they don't work to begin with. Perhaps it was just for the effect to let us know that things are really bad now and the demon is in complete control, especially if we aren't looking at the situation through the lens of the Mandela catalog. But I can't say for sure. So I say all of this about the religious part of it to say that potentially the child could have been taken and him coming back may have been seen as a miracle by the grandparents, but he wasn't right. He was then able to take out the family one by one from the inside as an imposter. There is also the finding of the eaten apples on the floor as a protagonist finds the room that is over the tunnel under the house. You of course follow the trail to the tunnel and it's here you gain the final knowledge of the last tape. And it is this action that condemns you to death, just as it did mankind when Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge. So in the beginning, I said that I think this game fits into the analog horror genre as it has everything that makes the genre what it is. That's obviously seen in the way the story progresses via finding information on cassette tapes, but there is more than that in the story. One of the characteristics of the genre is that typically the video feed is distorted and altered when something unexplainable or evil comes into view. This is shown in the Mandela catalog by the warped images and censored shots when the alternates are on screen. I think Jisatsu does something similar. When the grandmother dies, something is just outside the window in the hallway. But we as the player can't see it. It also happens when we catch the koi and when we are inverting the crucifixes in the house. It's more than that though. In the Mandela catalog, people are persuaded to take extra long naps because of something called MAD which is an acronym for Metaphysical Awareness Disorder. Sorry guys, I can't say the S word. Uh, YouTube doesn't like it. This can be caused either by an alternate whispering some information directly to the person or by them altering audiovisual media to give information that is so horrible, the person hearing it won't want to be alive anymore. I think perhaps we see a version of both instances in this game. When we see grandmother's corpse, behind her, the TV is on, and there appears to be a black silhouette on the screen. I think this is the audio-visual media being altered somehow. Obviously, it was in the TV. And with grandfather, I think it was actually an alternate that caused him to go to sleep in the bath, as after you take his fingernails, grandmother appears in the water. In retrospect, I think both grandparents were fine initially, as we see them appear normal when we take them the koi to chop the head off for us. It's only after the incidents where they both go to sleep for a really long time that we are alerted to issues with them directly. This is all because I believe they receive information so horrible that they can't go on living. Then there's also the statues near the end of the game. Remember from my last video that I said if you stare at them long enough, they become censored. I think this is to also show that they aren't holy. A similar thing happens when the angel comes down to talk to Mary in the Mandela catalog. You get a horrible image that is then censored so you can't see it. This means that everything holy is replaced with something unholy and that is why I believe the images are censored when we go into the tunnel. With all that said, I think the ending is understandable. The tapes are sent to the station. Whoever views the footage will die, which is what happens to the boss and the subordinate. I think the grandson then intends to use the film station to broadcast the tapes to untold amounts of people, thereby spreading the influence of the demon, which is what the false Gabriel wanted in their universe. So that's it. I don't think the information from my previous video was incorrect. I just think it was incomplete. That being said, I still don't think it's finished. 
I think there's more information to be found. A perfect example of this is my discovery at the beginning of the video. And I think perhaps people will discover more about this game the more they play and look for things initially unseen. But perhaps we won't. Perhaps much of it is meant to remain shrouded in mystery to allow us to fill in the gaps with whatever madness our psyche comes up with. What do you guys think? Again, you all seem to really enjoy my previous video. If you haven't seen it, I'll also post a link here in the description. Please go watch it for a more comprehensive explanation of the playthrough itself. If you all like the video, please drop a like and consider subscribing. I'm having a lot of fun with this style of video and I hope to bring more like it in the future. As always, I'm Seraphic Thunder, appreciate you all watching, and I'll see you on the next one.